hi guys welcome back to my channel and i was waiting for a sunny day to film this video because the picture is better when it's sunny but it was raining it was cloudy and today is, it's even snowing and it's mid-march so i don't know what's going on with the weather but anyways i have to film this video to help you guys and here we go so you might notice it's pretty dark today but i guess it's okay and it's also pretty cold, so I'm wearing a sweatshirt. <laughs> okay, today we'll learn about a rocket engine thrust. And if you remember from my previous video, we learned about the principle behind the thrust generation, which is a change of momentum. So in this video, we'll see how the same principle of thrust generation applies to a rocket engine. First, let's remember the thrust equation from the previous video. As you see, thrust depends on the mass flow rate, on the difference of velocities at the inlet and the exit, and on the difference of the forces due to pressures on the control surface areas and the inlet and exit as well. But in a rocket engine, we don't have an inlet because the engine itself is inside the rocket, so we can get rid of V1 right away. And what would be the mass flow rate in, an, in a rocket engine? That would be the, just the mass flow rate of fuel, which is burning. So you see now the V2 expression doesn't make sense because there is no one or two exits. And we can just call V2 VE, which stands for exhaust or velocity at the exhaust of a rocket engine, which we also call sometimes a nozzle because it only has one outlet, which we can call exhaust. So VE is the velocity with which the fuel exits the rocket engine. All right, now let's look at P2A2, P1A1 terms. So what are those? Again, we don't have one and two of the inlet and exit per se. So let's denote them differently. We know when the fuel is exiting the engine, it's going to have some pressure associated with it. So let's call that pressure P sub E, which stands again for exhaust. So P2 becomes PE. What is the area? Well, the area is just the area of the nozzle or the exhaust, and we can call it AE as well. But how do we deal with P1? Remember that in an aircraft engine, P1 was the outside pressure at the inlet. So when we have this term P2A2, P1A1, it was a difference of forces due to pressures at the exit and inlet. So for the rocket engine, we have to compare P exhaust, PE, with some other pressure. What would that pressure be? Well, if we zoom out of the rocket engine, we see that the rocket is traveling through the atmosphere. And so the pressure of the atmosphere is pretty constant and uniform throughout. So we can call it P0 or PA for ambient pressure. So the difference between P0 and PE is going to be that difference of force that acts on the rocket engine from the outside. So from here, the difference of the forces due to pressures for the rocket engine is going to be PE minus P0 or P0 times the area of the exhaust because there is no more areas associated with the rocket engine. And so if we combine everything together in an equation, we'll get this equation for thrust. So now, in addition to the aircraft thrust equation that we learned before, we also know how to calculate the rocket thrust equation. And now I can't wait to share more videos with you so that you have enough skill and knowledge to solve thrust related problems or any other aerospace problems in the future. So this is it for today. I know it might be a pretty short video, but I hope it still brought value to you, especially if you are studying right now or you want to study aerospace engineering. If this video was helpful, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this in the future. And thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.